Hello, my name is Chris Natman and I work on the Cargurus content teams in the US and in the UK. Now, as you can perhaps tell by my accent, I'm actually UK based. So why am I here on the Cargurus US YouTube channel rather than my usual home of the Cargurus UK YouTube channel? Well, you can thank my choice of car for that. In case you hadn't already guessed, it's a BMW i3. In this video, which is part of a series we're running on car gurus about our own cars, I'm going to explain why I bought it. So why did I buy a BMW i3? Well, in order to answer that, I should probably first explain what it is that I use my car for, because let's face it, if I needed a car that could do huge distances or carry huge things, then a BMW i3 would not be ideal. That is not the case though. Predominantly, I use my car for local journeys and occasionally going away at the weekend. Um, and also, I have a family of four, so the fact that the i3 is a four-seater is absolutely fine. I should note too, my kids are both quite young, so again, the fact that uh, the i3 doesn't have the most commodious uh, rear passenger space isn't a problem for me at this stage. That is not to say that I don't sometimes crave more space. I have, for example, needed to borrow a larger car for a week-long family holiday, but that was only one week in the six months that I've owned this i3. For everything else, including those weekends away, we've managed just fine with this car. So in terms of the space it offers, the i3 is just about fit for purpose for me and my family, or it is for most of the time anyway. Um, there have been occasions when I've had like a Skoda Superb Estate, for example, uh, on test and just marvelled at the space and thought how useful it would be to have that much room. But then I also think that if I did have something like a Superb Estate, I would spend a lot of the time thinking I had much more room than I needed for most of my journeys. I think really the i3 is big enough for most of the time. Now there is the question as well of why didn't I go for something uh, in between an i3 and a Superb, something like a Ford Focus or a Volkswagen Golf and that was definitely a discussion that I had with my wife when I first suggested the i3. Um, but for me, I, when I choose cars, I always want something that I find interesting, exciting. Um, so if I wanted a Golf, for example, I would sort of lean towards a Golf GTI or a Golf R. But I have had hot hatches before and I fancied something a bit more left field this time round, uh, something where I found the design or the build or the powertrain really interesting. And I suppose that really is what led me to the i3. While the i3 is definitely not a sporty car, it's certainly innovative. It was built at a time when electric cars, or at least the new era of electric cars, were still pretty new. And while some, like Nissan, for example, were building electric cars that looked and felt fairly conventional, BMW used electrification as an excuse to go all out. Just designed something completely different from the ground up. There's some great stuff in the um, owner's manual about this. Let's see if I can uh, find a little extract. Um, yeah, so recycling, for example, at BMW i, we not only pioneer new materials, we also take care of the recycling. There is another bit here as well, about forged by the power of wind and water. The BMW i3 not only produces zero emissions while driving, all electricity that goes into its production in Leipzig is generated from renewables. BMW factory has been leading the way in sustainable production for a long time. BMW i has gone even further and significantly proved its facilities. The factory in Leipzig produces its own renewable energy and operates on 100% clean electric power at zero emissions. So it's all just a slightly different take on building cars. And I think that's one of the things that I found really interesting when thinking of uh, whether to go for an i3. I remember being at the UK press launch for the i3 when it first arrived here and having to run at 100 miles an hour just to keep up because there was so much new information. There was so much that was fundamentally different about not just the car but also the ownership proposition and then I remember getting in it and marvelling at this cool interior and going for a drive in it and ever since then to be honest I've been a little bit obsessed with i3s. What I didn't have was the money to be able to afford to buy one but with a few years behind it uh, depreciation has brought the price of a 2015 example like this. This has got around 40,000 miles on the clock just about into budget and that's when I decided to take the plunge. In doing so I also made the switch to electric motoring. This is a point I've made uh, in some of my other videos about this i3 um, and it's the fact that when I was choosing this car 
the uh, fact it was electric actually wasn't one of the main reasons for going for it. Actually, I preferred or I found more interesting the construction of it, the fact it's got this carbon fibre reinforced plastic passenger cell, for example. So it's been a surprise to me to find out just how much I am enjoying electric motoring. And this is coming from somebody that has grown up loving high performance petrol cars. In fact, a year ago, if you had said to me what would be one of the biggest downsides of going for an electric car, I would have probably said the lack of noise that you get from a really good petrol engine. So I find it very strange that now I find the lack of noise in the i3 one of the most appealing things about it. It makes it so serene to drive. Or maybe it's just nice to have a bit of peace and quiet away from the kids. Who knows? Anyway, other sort of very typical electric car things that I've been enjoying uh, include the instant response that you get from an electric motor, the pretty strong performance. And in the i3, you get some very strong regenerative braking. So you can do a lot of your driving on one pedal. What it's not so good at is if you want to go fast down a road, it doesn't sort of have the kind of engaging handling that uh, you would get from something like a hot hatch, but it's very easy to drive around town and it does still have very cohesive control weights, which is sort of a very typical BMW thing. I've also enjoyed the home charging element of electric car ownership. I've got a seven kilowatt wall box and can take the i3's battery from empty to full in around three hours. That charging time is pretty low for an electric car and that's down to a combination of it being a reasonably powerful charger for a home charger at least. And also this is an early i3 so it's only got a 22 kilowatt hour battery. So a smaller battery takes less time to fill up. Now in terms of range it gives me around 70 miles from a full charge on a warm day like today. It really is warm as well. I'm actually going to open the window. I'm boiling it. Um, in the winter, the range is more like 50 to 60 miles, which doesn't sound great, does it? Um, the way I think about the range of the car is a bit like how I think about the space of it, which is it's just about enough for what I need it for. So put another way, I can do most of my journeys, leave and get back on the range of the battery and then I can just plug it in when I get home. For those journeys where I do need more range, I've taken a couple of steps to ensure I won't be left stranded. The first is that I chose a car with rapid charge preparation. Not all i3s got this, but I made sure I chose a car that did have it. So what this means is that if I'm doing a long journey, I haven't got enough range and I can stop at a rapid charger, then I can plug in and within 25 minutes I've given the battery an 80% boost. The second get me out of jail free card with this particular i3 is that it's a range extender model. So that means in addition to the battery and electric motor, it has a 650cc petrol or gas, as we're on the US channel, scooter engine in the back. And this acts as a generator to hold the battery charge. So the practicalities of that is if I'm doing a long journey, I know I'm not gonna make it on the battery range. Once I've used a quarter of the battery range, once I've lost one bar on the display here, I can then manually switch the range extender on. I've programmed button eight as a shortcut button, or you can do it through the iDrive. This then turns the range extender on, that holds the battery charge, and for around 70 miles or so, I can drive just using the gas in the gas tank rather than the battery. When I've done that 70 miles, I can either revert to battery power if that's gonna be enough to get me to my destination, or I can stop at a gas station, refill another 70 miles, and you can keep doing that as many times as you want to. What the range extender does therefore is remove any sense of range anxiety. As you can probably tell, I am a big fan of the i3. I drive it because it fits my needs, but also I find it interesting. And it's a bit of a cliche, I know, but I genuinely do look forward to every drive in this car. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to find out more about the i3, then also head over to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel where I've done some more videos about my own car here. Um, and I talk about things like more about the construction of the car. I talk about how I've learned to make the best use of the range extender. And soon I'll do another one as well about whether I am going to take out a BMW extended warranty on the car. Also, please do check out other videos on this Car Guru's US YouTube channel. We've got loads of new car reviews. We're also doing more of these kind of series of videos about our own contributors and why we all chose to buy the cars that we did. Please also subscribe, turn on those notifications by ringing the bell icon and be sure to let us know what you think about the i3 by leaving a comment in the comment section below.